we go. All right. We're just um, waiting to get our cameras on and ready to rock and roll. So we are here. I will call the St. Paul City Council to order. Roll call. Yeah. Naker. Here. Prince. Here. Tao. Here. Tolbert. Here. Yang. Here. Jalali. Here. Council President Brenmont. Here. Seven present, no one absent. Please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance if you would like. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um. Consent agenda items four through 16 are before you for your consideration. All right, we have 16, uh, up to 16 on the consent agenda. Is there anything that should be taken separately today? Seeing none, Ms. Prince moves approval of the consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The consent agenda is adopted. Item 17, resolution 22-244, outlining the city's 2022 legislative agenda. All right, uh, Christian Taylor is here to present um, the 2022 legislative agenda. And I, I will just um, ask you to pause for one moment. Um, I did not say this at the start of our meeting, which I typically do, and that is that we are continuing to um, distance and mask um, for COVID reasons. Um, during, if you are here to testify today, if you can keep your mask on while you testify, I know sometimes people take them off, sometimes people leave them on. In here, we'll leave them on. In the background, you might hear a, a noise. It's our HEPA filters. Um, they're a little loud, so we're gonna try to talk loud into our microphones, and we ask you to do the same um, as we navigate this time. Um, and, there, and we appreciate your uh, support as we go through this. So, um, commercial break before we start with you, but thank you so much for being here. We're, we're excited to hear the, your first uh, legislative agenda report to the council. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Council President Bren Moen and council members. Um, before I begin, I just wanna thank you all, our department directors and city staff for routinely meeting with me and contributing to the agenda before us today. Um, I'm going to start off with our bonding priorities. It's a bonding year uh, at the legislature. And we have four bonding priorities that we've submitted formally to MMB. In ranked order, those are the uh, eastbound Kellogg River Center Bridge at the $26 million ask and is our number one priority this legislative session. Great River Passage at 20 million is our second priority. Uh, Como Zoo, 12 million at number three. And then the fourth priority is the North End Community Center at 16 million. Um, I will just note that Como Zoo and the North End Community Center were included in the governor's uh, recommended uh, budget. Um, the Playwright Center is our only nonprofit partnered project this session, and that is an ask of $4.45 million. We've previously worked with them um, two sessions ago to get them funding to get their project off the ground. I would be remiss if I didn't mention our, all of our support items that, um, uh, supportive bonding items this session. Um, the Hillcrest redevelopment site, $12 million, very important for the city, really transformative, and, and um, something I'm really excited to see get funded. We are also very supportive of Ramsey County's number one priority, that is the park at River's Edge. That's a $26 million request. Uh, similarly to last year, we are still supporting the Reconnect Rondo land bridge. Uh, and then two new additions this uh, year for the agenda, and I wanna thank uh, Council Member Prince for uh, getting this on here, is uh, Sana Foundation at $5 million and the Eastside Freedom Library at $300,000. Those are cash requests or what the legislature calls equity appropriations. Moving on to local government aid or LGA, uh, we continue to support general increases to the LGA appropriation to meet cities unmet needs as well as having it account for inflation. We rely on LGA to provide basic services to our residents and it, it accounts for over 20% of our general fund revenues. We anticipate changes to the LGA formula this legislative session as legislators last session requested various city associations uh, to take a deeper look at the current formula. I was joined by Director McCarthy and his staff to take a first glance at uh, proposed changes and we will continue to be at the table to advocate for the city. Um, I just wanna mention local control as well and just as a general rule of thumb, we support the preservation of local control to ensure city officials can exercise their own decisions, uh, decision-making authority. Moving on to housing, uh, housing will always be a priority for the city of St. Paul. 
We believe housing is a basic and fundamental need and so intimately connected with uh, every facet of our lives. Throughout the past two years, we've seen large societal shifts that have made us shelter at home for prolonged periods of time. Schooling, work, uh, calls with our doctors or other healthcare professionals have all been done remotely from the safety and security of our homes. But as we all know, that in and of, self, it, that in and of itself is a privilege and certainly not the case for everybody. We continue to actively respond to the needs of unsheltered residents, individuals, and families on the brink of homelessness, as well as those experiencing housing insecurity. This session, in coordination with, in partnership with Ramsey County, Heading Home Ramsey, and the Continuum of Care, we are pursuing an annual appropriation of $14.5 million over five years to meet the needs of our most vulnerable residents. This funding will support 100 bed family shelter, uh, 100 bed single room occupancy shelter, uh, funding to develop and operate the Familiar Faces pilot program to address frequent users of shelter and emergency services, as well as funding for uh, low barrier day shelter services. We also support continued and increased investments into local housing trust funds, NOAA preservation, and housing infrastructure bonds as a means to produce and preserve affordable housing in our community. Uh, moving on to public safety, we support uh, legislative efforts that align with our community first public safety model. In that vein, we are supportive of Representative Frazier and Ch uh, Chair Mariani's $100 million public safety innovation package, uh, which among many things would provide grants to law enforcement agencies that would be used to expand community partnerships. Uh, as always, we are supportive of meaningful legislation aimed at reducing gun violence. And finally, I want to highlight the work that we've been doing to curb the ever-increasing rates of stolen catalytic converters in our community. Council President Bren Moen, I want to thank you for your leadership in getting uh, this uh, issue onto the League of Minnesota City's uh, legislative platform last summer. We continue to work closely with Senator Marty on this legislation uh, that would empower and allow our police officers to charge individuals if they find them with multiple clearly stolen catalytic converters in their possession. Uh, lifelong learning. We are committed to ensuring access to quality education and childcare for our residents. We support investments in early childhood, um, everything from increasing the CCAP rates, removing caps for early learning scholarships, and just general state investments to fully fund our public schools to appropriate levels. We also support increased appropriations and grants from DEED to bolster our Right Track program, uh, in which we train nearly 1,000 young people every year. Uh, right Track brings hundreds of partners across sectors uh, to support young people starting on their career journeys. We are continuing to change the narrative of the types of services our libraries are providing to our residents. We are very supportive of recently introduced legislation that would increase funding for the Regional Library Basic System Support, a funding pool that has remained stagnant for the past decade. We support investments in infrastructure to repair and modernize all of our libraries. I'm working closely with our libraries to capitalize on available funding through the Coronavirus Capital Projects Fund. Uh, the legislature has roughly $100 million in funding to be used for broadband infrastructure, digital equity, digital connectivity, and multi-purpose community facilities. We believe our Hayden Heights Library on the greater east side, as well as our Riverview Library on the west side, have a strong argument to be eligible for this funding. Uh, street sidewalks and bikeways. Traditionally, transportation funding resources have significantly lagged behind the need, especially for local municipalities. We support a new comprehensive transportation financing package that gives cities the new resources and funding tools uh, needed to meet growing demands, which includes additional funding for transit investments. Um, with regard to our parks and recreation centers, uh, as a general rule of thumb, we support equitable distribution of all the legacy funds. Um, our local parks and trails are not constitutionally eligible for legacy funds. Therefore, we support the dedication of other resources that can be invested into our local assets. Uh, resiliency is the last uh, area that I will uh, be discussing today. Um, as you all know, we have committed to becoming carbon neutral by 2050 and being a leader on clean and efficient energy, sustainable transportation systems, land use, and solid waste systems. To that end, uh, we support a state sales tax exemption uh, for the McCarran's water treatment plant. Uh, we support legislative efforts to financially support our citywide lead line replacement efforts, as well as policies to authorize the use of utility funds to pay for uh, 
private service line replacements, support disclosures of a lead line at point of sale, and lead line replacement requirements. We support state and federal funding to clean up Pig's Eye Lake. And finally, we support accelerating the statewide commercial energy code adoption process with updates occurring every three years rather than the current six-year cycle. Um, for the sake of brevity, I, I skipped over some other things in the agenda, but happy to answer any questions or any, take any comments. Great. Thank you, and um, thank you for um, coming around, talking to council members about this. And to your point, the f entire legislative agenda is attached to our Legistar and is part of our agenda for folks that want to see um, more details on, on our legislative agenda for 2022. Um, are there comments or questions? Ms. Naker. Thanks, Council President. Thanks so much, Mr. Taylor, for your work on this. I really appreciate how comprehensive our legislative agenda is and how carefully you worked with all of us to make sure our values were reflected there. Um, there are two parts of our agenda that I'm most excited about and that I'm actually hoping that you could help us talk to our constituents about because I've been thinking more and more about how to engage um, our, our constituents in advocating to the legislature for the things that we need. One of those is the unsheltered homelessness investment that you mentioned. We are in dire straits if we don't get help from the legislature on this, as we all know. Um, the, the funding that we were able to access during the emergency during COVID is running out in May. Um, and we have families and individuals who could literally be on the street. So um, any help you need from us and anything you can do to give us information that we can help give to our constituents to advocate would be helpful. And then also um, local government aid. I know we talk about this every year, but um, this disconnect between the fact that cities are often the places that are most able to get things done often the only level of government that's able to get things done and the closest to our constituents, so we know what's really needed, um, but we don't have the resources to do it, and that's where local government aid comes in, and I believe, at least in previous years, we've heard that St. Paul has the greatest gap between what we are supposed to receive from the legislature according to their own formula and what we actually get, and so in a year when we have resources at the state, um, again, this is something where I think it would be helpful as our, as our residents talk to us about the property tax burden and about better services that they wanna see we're all paying in to the state's pool, and yet that LGA isn't coming back to us and isn't pegged to inflation. So if you can help us make that case and let our constituents know, I think that would be really helpful. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, totally committed to working with all of you on, on both of those issues and whatever else uh, that, um, that you would like to. So thank you. Yeah, if you can get that solved for us, we will. Okay. Salute you with the glitter cannons that we promise everybody. It would be fair. <laughs> it's quite a challenging thing. I just, just um, seconding what Ms. Naker said, um, when the state reports that they have a surplus, at the same time they're not funding unfunded, an unmet need in the, the funding formula, I find it disingenuous. Um, I know over time this kind of enthusiastic underfunding of core cities by, with the LGA, including um, unfunded mandates and also, um, to your point, unfunded responsibilities, things that we end up taking care of because no one else is, hurts. I mean, it, it wears um, us down on, in our budget. So I think um, any, any way that we can support on delivering that message, I know uh, the League of uh, Minnesota Cities also is delivering that message, but it's imperative and we look at our schools, we look at our infrastructure um, and the obligations that land on the city government and we need that aid. Um, I've always wanted to call it allocation instead of aid because it is our money that's getting paid in. Um, and I think we all need that support from the state. So it's seconding um, what Ms. Nicker has brought forth and, and recognizing that it's an uphill battle. Um, we're glad you're going into that battle for us. Um, and any way we can support you, we will. It is um, in, imperative at this time. Um, I saw a hand up from Ms. Yang. Thanks, Christian, for all of your work on this. I really appreciate um, you know, you reaching out to our offices and I can see like all the different priorities that I named in the east side inserted into this. So um, thank you for your work on this. I, I've always wondered, um, you know, I know that this is a really extensive legislative agenda and conversations about the issues on here, like come up within like internal conversations we have with legislators or even like our lobbyists meeting them as well. But do you know, can you share how this also gets delivered or communicated to legislators? Is it like a, a packet that gets emailed out to them or sent to them directly to their offices? Uh, yeah, that's a great question, Councilmember Yang. So at least, I don't know how maybe other folks in my role have done it, but I plan to, after this meeting, to send this out to our delegation, um, every delegation member so that they have it. And then we, I also share it out to 
uh, my colleagues at the county, uh, Ramsey County, uh, City of Minneapolis, Hennepin County, and then the city associations that we're a part of as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Ms. Jalali. Thank you. Um, I have two things. The first is just to acknowledge you, Christian, and your leadership. You're doing multiple people's jobs, and you've just stepped up and done it, and I'm just in awe of you, so thank you. Um, we're the capital city, and you're the face of our uh, community's needs at the legislature, and just I really just think we have to personally appreciate you for all you're taking on, and I think that's really evident in um, this really comprehensive, um, beautiful-looking document that we can share and, and just really appreciate it. Um, I had a question about just... Um, a topic that has been renewed in even the last couple of weeks. I know we've been developing our agenda for a while, but in a general too, from a process standpoint, like we submit our agenda, but things keep happening in the community and they, and they drive conversations at the legislature. And there's been a renewed interest in talking about restricting and banning no-knock warrants at the legislative level and in the state. And I just tried to scan the PDF that's in here. And I don't know if I could find it or not. There's a lot in there, but um, what uh, what's the, process to take kind of live topics like that that are also very important and relate to our public safety goals and best practices and can we see some of those things added in I know we're advancing kind of our first round but um, there will be things that come up that are very timely like that as an example and could you speak a little to how we add things in and specifically also that one if we can make sure it's it's reiterated to our reps at the Capitol um, last last round I believe it was representative Hollins who um, is our one of our St. Paul reps who's bringing legislation on that and so we have good we have good lawmakers doing that work for us, but how do we keep that and, and reinforce it would be my question. Uh, Councilmember Jalali, first of all, thank you for the kind words. It means a lot to me. Um, and thank you for bringing up the, the no-knock warrant issue. So yes, you're correct. As Representative Hollins introduced legislation. Um, I took a peek at that and uh, shared it with some of our city attorney office staff to just see like, you know, is there any issue, like the legality of it, does it impact us? Um, but at a first glance, I mean, it, I thought it was honestly a very thoughtful and measured approach to kind of solving the issue, understanding that, you know, just because the city of St. Paul's police department hasn't used a no-knock warrant since 2016 doesn't make it a non-issue for everyone else in the state. Um, so I will, you know, I'm happy to connect you with her and then maybe even our city attorney and we can have a further dialogue on the issue. That's great. And I would just not named it as a topic of interest that literally came up in the last like two weeks. And I think I had talked to you three weeks before that. So <laughs> there's just an example of how in real time, like our community's many needs are illuminated by what's going on. It's good to know that we're already looking at that. Um, you know, in that situation, we asked a neighboring department to execute um, a warrant and you know now there's a very bad situation at hand because of it so I personally am very interested in uh, standardizing the best of what we're doing and if that's a state change and we should put that in the agenda thank you for answering that and I'll follow up I appreciate it and, and councilman Bichelle, I, I forgot to uh, say you know at the risk of sounding cliche like it is a living document and if it's the will of the council to add that like just let me know and I'm happy to do that thank you I think that that is a good reminder. We can continue to amend the, the legislative agenda um, throughout the course of the year, and, and sometimes these things do come up. Um, so thanks for that reminder. Any other comments or questions on this body of work? Ms. Prince. I just want to add to the chorus of voices about your incredible work. You have been so responsive, and again, as was stated, filling in and for multiple other people, and I just want to thank you for that. And for, and for as Councilmember Yang said, getting some of our east side priorities in at the last minute, it was phenomenal. Thank you, Christian. Any other? All right, seeing none, Ms. Jalali moves approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Or I'm sorry, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The resolution is adopted. Item 18 is resolution 22-245, authorizing the city to transfer $4,500,000 of American Rescue Plan funds to a specific account for PED tourism package. Ms. Naker. Thanks, Council President. Um, this is a really exciting item that we're introducing today, and um, I know that as We've all been talking about our strategic priorities for American Rescue Plan dollars. One of the things that's come out loud and clear from, from all of us is the fact that the pandemic is far from over and that the economic impact on our businesses um, is real. 
and the desire to get these rescue dollars out the door to uh, help our businesses when they need it. So I'm really excited about this um, tourism package that we're proposing, $4.5 million to help those um, businesses and those organizations that are, that are tourist attractions as we enter into the spring, which is a very active, busy, vibrant time when lots of people are going to be visiting our community, and we want to make sure we're providing the support to our uh, tourism industry so that they're prepared. So um, excited to introduce this today. Um, I'm going to move to lay it over for one week because our planning and economic development team is still working on the specific rules as we speak. Um, so we will be asking them to come back uh, next week with those rules so we can finally adopt it. But I think we all have a sense of urgency about the need to get this out the door. Great. Thank you. So there's a, a move for a one-week layover. Any discussion on that motion? Uh, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The resolution is laid over to February 23rd. Item 19 is final adoption of Ordinance 22-7, amending Chapter 86 of the Administrative Code to add Section 86.12, requiring council approval prior to submission of grant applications. Mm -hmm. Last week I mentioned that I would be bringing in a version 3 today um, that added um, a third requirement that city obligations uh, be listed in the resolution title. Um, so version 3 is in Legistar. Um, I would, I, so I'm going to um, move version three and then we will indeed have to lay this item over in final form for one more week, even though I know everyone is waiting for this to pass. <laughs> um, so I move version three. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The amendment is approved and the ordinance is laid over to February 23rd for final adoption. Item 20 is a public hearing on Ordinance 22-8, granting the application of 560 Randolph Avenue, LLC, to rezone property at 540 Randolph Avenue from T2 Traditional Neighborhood to I-1 Light Industrial and amending Chapter 60 of the Legislative Code pertaining to the zoning map. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Ms. Naker moves to close the public hearing. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the ordinance is laid over to February 23rd for final adoption. <laughs> Item 21 is public hearing of ordinance 22-9, amending section 3.02 of the administrative code to create an office of neighborhood safety and immigrant and refugee program within the office of the city attorney. All right, and this is a public hearing, but before we go to the public hearing, I believe there is a amendment from Ward 2. Thanks, Council President. Uh, yes, there's a version 2 in Legistar that um, just adds a little bit of language. Since this is a brand new office, it, we really want to make sure that it is being very transparent with the public about what its goals are and that it reports back to the public on how it's doing and adjust course if necessary to make sure that we're achieving our goals of public safety. So um, this is just a small addition to the research section that asks the department to also make sure that it's um, having that transparency and that accountability to the public. All right, so there is version two uh, that's in front of us, um, moved by Ms. Dinker. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The amendment is approved. All right, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody?